If you drive Interstate 40 through Kingman, Arizona, you'll see dramatic road cuts on either side of the freeway, which expose some very interesting rocks. On top of the stack sits a formation called the Peach Spring Tuff, in places 300 feet thick, which records evidence for an ancient volcanic eruption on a titanic scale. Welcome to Dr. C's Excellent Adventures. We're out here today exploring the Peach Spring Tuff uh, at a couple of field trip localities described by Lon Abbott and Terry Cook in their book Geology Underfoot in Northern Arizona. A tuff is a type of rock made of volcanic ash and other fragmental material ejected from a volcano. In places, the peach spring tuff includes some rather large fragments of pumice. There are two types of volcanic eruptions that can produce deposits of tuff. In an ash fall eruption, material is blasted into the stratosphere, spreads out laterally, and settles over the landscape. In ash flow eruptions, volcanic ejecta and hot poisonous gas forms a mixture that is denser than air and flows downward and outward under the pull of gravity. The Peach Spring Tuff was deposited by an ash flow eruption 18.78 million years ago. One might think this would require a really monstrous volcano, but in fact not all volcanic eruptions come from volcanoes. An eruption of this type leaves behind a huge hole in the ground called a caldera, rather than building a large volcanic mountain. In this demonstration by Dina Vineski and Steve Wessels of the U.S. Geological Survey, a balloon buried in flour simulates an expanding magma chamber, which then collapses after an imaginary volcanic eruption. In this simple animation, imagine that we've sliced the earth vertically so that we can watch the caldera develop from the side. The green line represents the earth's surface, red is magma, and blue is volcanic ash. Surprisingly, the caldera that formed from the Peach Spring Tuff eruption wasn't identified until 2009 when, based on careful mapping and age dating, Ferguson was able to define the Silver Creek caldera as the source. So much erosion has occurred since the eruption that the rocks that collapsed into the center of the caldera now stand above the surrounding landscape, and half of the caldera was faulted away. Remnants of the caldera are now exposed west of Oatman, Arizona, near the Colorado River. So what was this eruption like? Field and geochemical evidence suggests that this thing was a single volcanic event. And the geologists who've studied this have calculated that approximately 640 cubic kilometers of material was ejected during the eruption while roughly an equal amount fell back into the caldera. At the base of the Peach Spring Tuff are wavy layers of pumice, indicating that the eruption started with a low-density pyroclastic surge. The bulk of the material was deposited by high-density pumice flows, which result from what the volcanologists call fountain collapse. This video shows fountain collapse of the Soufriere Hills eruption on Montserrat. In this style of eruption, there isn't enough force to blast material into the stratosphere, so pyroclastic flows spill out in all directions from the vent. Over a four-year period, the total volume of material erupted from the Soufriere Hills was roughly one-half of a cubic kilometer. 
the Peach Spring Tuff eruption was thus 1,300 times larger, and there's evidence that it all may have erupted in a single day. So, when we look at this still image from the Soufriere Hills, we have to imagine an eruption, I don't know, 30,000 times this size in ancient western Arizona? The mind boggles trying to get a grip on this thing. So on your next drive to California, when you come over the rise east of Kingman, you're already within the area originally covered by the Peach Spring Tuff, and you won't leave until about three hours later when you get to Barstow. Lucky for us, the Peach Spring Tuff was a one-and-done eruption, and we're unlikely to see another one like this in Arizona. Now Yellowstone is another matter, but that's a different adventure.